So looking at the spies here, um, we did follow through with Friday's Friday's bounce. Uh, we couldn't close it above 242.50. We did get above there, spent a good part portion of the day above. Right at the end of the day, came off, um, and we're right back down here. So we got a nice little range to work with here. 241.85 to 242.50, and that's on the spies of IWM, which we've been talking about for a couple of weeks in terms of the relative weakness for the other indices. That continued yesterday. Notice Friday's close was above 140. Um, yesterday's close was below. To compare that to the queues, you can see um, the bounce continued there. So again. We had a failed breakdown below 136. One thing that's common, even though these have started to move away from each other, not lockstep, um, but one thing they all have in common is a failure to break down. Um, they come into these longer term support levels, they look like they're gonna break, and then the buying, the buying comes in. Um, and so that's kind of the one thing that you really can count on if you're looking to make a trade uh, in any of these, these indices. Let me just go back to IWM for a second. IWM, we have not seen a close below 139 in quite some time. Uh, if we do get a close below 139, what it does is it brings into play this December to April um, consolidation range, which basically actually I scratched that. The, the, the December to April consolidation range was like around 130. 850 to 134.50. So close below 139 doesn't get you there. It's got to be in the kind of the mid one, mid 138s. Now, and I would say spend a few days at least, you know, near that 130, 138. Um, if it gets below 138, uh, I'd be buying 135 puts. All right, uh, ARNA, a um, couple of uh, small. Uh, biotechs today. This one, in this case, good phase two hypertension. Um, so it looks like it'll accelerate this drug getting approval. Um, if we look at it, it was a $50 stock uh, a couple of years ago. And since then, it hasn't really been able to break um, out of this, this sell off. Um, you know, Aaron, it said that because you got an alert for something that you're not supposed to have access to, I don't think. It's for the new traders on the desk. After I finish the morning meeting, he talks to them about the open. So or maybe it's intentional. I don't know. Uh, who knows these days? So, so in this case, um, it's gapping to 25. So it's actually, you know, if we look at it, we go back to the fall of 2015. It sold off from around $26 to 18, and then they ripped it back up to $26. And so that's kind of where we are this morning. This is a tough, tough spot, um, but to stay up there, zoom in. So if we look at it in the after hours, it was above the 26. So we got a lot of volume. So we got, so we got some really good information here on this. And it's already traded 200,000 shares in the pre-market. In the after hours yesterday, it looks like it did over a million. So really good news. Um, it had topped out here at 26, lo and behold. Um, it pulled back into 2470. It took out 26, couldn't hold above, can't hold above this morning. This is a tough area. I mean, this is a very tough area. I showed you on the daily why that's the case. Um, for support, I put 23 and a half, 24. So maybe we'll get the flush down to here. Ideally, you'd get a flush down to here, then get a ba uh, bounce back up to 25, 40 to 26, a test again. And then you'd see um, it's certainly possible that you could get a deep, deeper pullback than that, but I think worth looking to buy it into this. Um, if it comes into this area and there's a shallow bounce, maybe about only back up to 25, and then takes out the low print here, then you would look for the deeper pullback to here. 
even if it plays out that way and comes back to 20 to 22 dollars um i would look for it to eventually grind its way back up to 26 again so that's just bigger picture longer term uh rcii they received a takeout bid 15 dollars a share um it was rejected by their board of directors so let's take a look at the daily you know just by and large there's nothing to be gleaned board of directors ceos of these companies some of them are complete morons some of them are really smart um they are guided by the normal fear and greed that everyone else is they know that their stock was 35 dollars a share it went down to eat someone private equity whoever made a bid uh said hey you know what this thing's we think it's worth 15 they well we're willing to pay 15 maybe they think it's worth 20 whoever put the bid in um these guys think hey the, the board thinks we can maybe do better maybe they can um at the end of the day um the market's going to decide now if that one bid and that rejection really puts it in play and they can get a bid at higher prices so what's great for us is it's at 13 right now in the pre-market so there's there's upside there people start to believe that maybe some other people will come in and bid for this thing because it has some real value um and there's there's downside um you know it's up two dollars right now there's downside of what if they just pull their offer and this thing was a it had gone down to eight dollars so either direction Three hundred fifty thousand shares. Right now, it's twenty percent below the bid that they rejected. You know, we looked at one of these names the other day. I forget it was SNCR maybe that had a bid and was trading at like a discount for the bid. Same thing here. Twenty percent discount to that first offer seems probably seems about actually right to me here. Um, doesn't mean it can't roll over to twelve and a half and then bounce back up into the thirteens. Doesn't mean that people will not believe that other bids are going to step forward. What that looks like is by ten ten thirty, you'll see the stock. You know, up in this area here, and if it consolidates and breaks to the upside again, um, play it long. And if it closes at the highs above 14, I'd probably go out with it overnight because we'll cover it on CNBC and there'll be some more upside. Um, old FOLD, it's another one, uh, another biotech. These guys, the FDA had gone to them and said, you know, we need to run another a more test because we think there might be some gastro GI tract issues here, stomach issues with taking the drug. Um, they, they now said you can submit the application. You don't have to do more studies to check if there's stomach side effects based on the data that you already have. Uh, the market obviously really liked that. There's the daily on it. So when it looked like this drug was going to go through it, it, it went up from $2 all the way up to 18. It's gapping up to 13.60 now. Interesting name, Amicus Therapeutics, Frim Therapeutics. So this is how I look at it. Um, it topped out here at 14 and a half. The sellers came in. Clearly, they were accumulating it here at 13.30. Um, but it's got a, you know, this second down bar here started at around 13.80. So I need to put that again if that's you got to really see it holding about 14 to make the play up to here. Um, it's another one. If you look at the daily on it, there's more upside. Obviously, the thing had run up a couple of years ago all the way to 18. So it could be a two-day two, two day play upside. Um, but for now, I mean, someone came in here and sold. Somebody sold like a million shares here um, to push it down to 1330. So if it fails up here at 14, play for the rollover through 1330 maybe comes all the way into my support area which is first one is 1250 and then it's 1180 to 12. and then snap i just put snap on here because morgan stanley uh they were one of the lead underwriters in this one and they originally gave a price target based on a certain analysis 
and then they came out, someone pointed out that the math they did was wrong, and so they corrected the math and they, they left the same price target, which any credibility they had was completely destroyed on the stock, um, and now they downgraded it. So they should have downgraded it back then when their, somebody pointed out their math was wrong, um, but they waited a couple of months, three months. If you check my Twitter feed, I linked to the article. Uh, so the key in this case is it's trading below its IPO price, and so anything that's below its IPO price, you want to be short. Um, maybe you get a little, some dip buyers come in first, and you can short it closer to 6, 1670, 1680. Um, but you want to short it if it gets closer, closer to 17. Uh, ANF. ANF. The funny thing about ANF is I got a little bit lucky in that, in the sense that I was buying pretty aggressively into 10 and the flush of 10, and it went all the way down to the 960s. It did have a quick pop back up to 80 cents. Um, right here, where I was able to sell a bunch. Then tested the half, came back up, never could hold above 980. So you have 950 by 980. It was really, if you look at the news, uh, an overreaction, but this sector is so hated right now because, you know, people get things in their mind and they're like, ooh, Amazon's destroying all retail. So like literally every retail name, um, with the exception of like the, the dollar stores where the people shop at dollar stores probably don't do a lot of online shopping, um, are getting obliterated. And the great thing about this is it's similar to like the biotechs in the last like 18 months where, the, you know, VRX went down below $10 and they had the, these nice rallies. So, you know, keep on destroying retail. Um, all these companies aren't going out of business, um, I don't think, at least not in the near term, medium term. Um, and we'll get some good bounces there. Um, but from a short term perspective, the big, it's 980 by 950. I'm still long some from 960 right here where it is in the free market. Um, I'd be out below 950, maybe look to short it um, for another down leg to closer to $9. Um, if it starts to hold above 980, look for the move back up to 10 where it failed, where it tried to initially bounce yesterday. Um, Tesla. So Tesla finally had a really good bounce. Um, I thought the behavior, though, after the really good bounce wasn't wasn't fabulous. Um, but now we do have kind of, it took out the low from a couple of days ago, moved back inside of the prior day's range, and we're getting this consolidation now between 316 and let's call it 312, um, where it consolidated the prior day. So... The reason I say it wasn't particularly easy yesterday was like, yeah, it had the initial bounce here, which was good. And it did flag here and break broke above 311 and had about a $5 follow through. But after that, it took out the 316 resistance, got above 317. And then this pullback here is just too deep from 317.50. And, you know, the, a pullback to here into 313 and a half, 313 would have been fine and a rip back up to the high. But it actually broke to the downside here below 312. And then they ripped it back up to 316. That's... That's hard. So I'm just, the way I look at it is if it comes in closer to 312 this morning, I'm buying back what I kind of sold into this. Um, and that's what's worked for me the last couple of days, by the way. Selling into this 316 here helped me be able to buy it into this. Um, sell it there so I can buy it into 312 again. I wasn't on the desk for this, or I would have bought back here. Um, and then eventually just, you know, playing for the move for the break above 320. Um, if you wanted to buy the 320 call, the spot to do it was yesterday when it was below 308, when they were cheap. Uh, now they're, they're more expensive now. Um, and then in NVIDIA, sure, take a look at that. I think we still have this probably marked up from yesterday. So if we go to the 30 minute, we can kind of see the markup from yesterday's morning meeting. And so in the case of NVIDIA, we kind of, we talked about this area here could some potential resistance. And what did it do when it got here? It did fail there on the open, failed on the next bar, failed in the next bar. So it took an hour and a half for it to kind of break through this 151. Um, then it kind of, it got to 152 and held the bid here for an hour and a half um, and eventually closed above this range here, which is bullish. Um, so let's look at the daily. So, I mean, this is still a very loved, I mean, this is a very strong stock. I mean, this is a nice pullback, but the um, the way it's acting here, I guess I actually, this area right here, 154, is a little bit dangerous to be long. 
Um, so if you're looking, if you're curious at this, I'd be like all the way back to 160 here. Nah, this is dangerous here. Um, it's just gone from 140 to 154. I would look for it to move sideways now. Um, if it moved sideways for a couple of days and then broke above 154, that would be a pretty good long long trade. But today, um, a failure 154 might take you right back to 152, and then I'd kind of see if that led to a larger pullback, or if it, um, um, or if it uh, just uh, consolidated here for the next move. That's it. Uh, be patient and good luck. Hope you enjoyed that video. You can actually watch that video if you're subscribed to our Trader 90 before the market even opens. What stocks are in play? What levels in those stocks are important? And how we might go about attacking that stock? That's Steve Spencer, 20 year veteran trader, laying it out there every morning before the market even opens. A really, really powerful tool to start your session off on the right foot. So right now we're offering a trial that you can take advantage of to access this meeting and other meetings throughout the day. We have a meeting at 11 a.m. Eastern where you can sit down with Mike Bellafiore and listen to him talk about what's going on during the morning session, what stocks were in play, what the best trade opportunities were, as well as maybe some things that we're looking at heading into the afternoon session. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that trial.